you get from it. So I'm glad you had some time to look at it before I had the chance to talk. Uh, because the way I like to work, it's very um, intuitive. I have some ideas. Uh, but the whole thing is about connecting people around the world. So all of you who come and take a look at my work are part of my work. That's why I do it. So this, is, this series of work has uh, started, I think, in 2015. And it has evolved, but there is a common thread that goes through my work. And one of the common threads is the idea of movement and transformation. And it has to do not only with the way I apply my medium, which is generally I start with acrylic and then go to, I don't want to turn back to anyone, um, uh, then apply oil and then other media. Uh, but it's also the concept of transforming I, everyone, all of us, every day is a different day. And uh, certainly over a period of time, we transform. And that is the case with me as well. So that concept of transformation, movement, and a connection between people all around the world. And one of the things I believe is that um, we are all connected, but and so that all of us are important, we're all a gift. And so you can see some of my work where people are blended together. And androgynous, you can't tell if it's a man or a woman, that's important. Uh, because all of us are important, no matter what background we have, what religion, what um, race, uh, what um, culture we have, we are all connected. Any questions at this point? Well, I take the pause. Do you use acrylic and like in that one, do you use many different, maybe you have to say like you may say, you mix acrylics and oils in there, right? Yes. Oh, okay. So I start with acrylic. So for example, this is acrylic. And so I might start with something like that. Um, oh. And Those then, with oil, and huh? then I, I'm sorry? The blends are oil. Yes, and then I go in with oil. I charcoal also in this particular one. Wow. The dripping of the paint is important to me too because I like to manipulate the uh, medium and see where it can take. I like to push it to uh, it's a, it, in different directions. A lot of people ask me, "Do you work, is this watercolor?" Because I get it so thin, but it's not. It's the oil. Uh, some of it might be acrylic like this, but uh, I like to play with that oil because oil is my first love, and so oil is going to be in my work most of the time. Yes? Is landscape important to your work? Landscape? Yes. Nature is really important. That's the other thing, our connection to nature. I mean, today we talk about how important our um, environment is and how things are changing, climate change. Well, um, that's been something that has been part of my life. I grew up in upstate New York, also used to vacation um, and have family up in New Hampshire in the mountains. So I love mountains, lakes, uh, trees, rocks. And um, uh, so, yeah, so my whole life I felt that nature was really important. And back then it was a thing, the, uh, that, um, the environment when I was growing up and now it's come back. I also see a lot of evidence of the marks of man, geometry, grids, power lines, Ladders. How does that fuse together with landscape and the human figure connect around the world? Great question. Thank you. So the um, I love the tension, the uh, dichotomy between nature and technology. What what um, is uh, that humans have made? So those things like the power lines um, and the grids that refer to architecture because I also have an interior design background, interior architectural design background, did that for many years and so that is also important to me. So there is lots of reference to that architecture uh, background. Question? Yes. Uh, I'm new, uh, the whole, uh, I come from a background of bikers and tattoo shops and you know what I mean? 
Okay. So I'm learning yeah. about art, any, and painting, and you know. Uh, yeah. And one thing I'm noticing, I'm following people on Instagram, like artists around the world, or YouTube, is this huge size of the canvases they choose. I wonder, like, why? Why? why, why? Is that why? I mean, I can speak for myself. Why, I yeah. really can't speak for other artists, but um, for me, there's something that happens when I paint big. When I paint small, there's one thing that happens, and then when I paint large, uh, it's it like an explosion. Too. And yes, and I really mm. relate to it. And I'm very physical, so I love touching and moving it, and uh, you know, getting up on a ladder, going down, up and down. You know, um, when I first started doing large work, oh my gosh, the, the next day my legs were killing me. <laughs> I could barely walk, but I, but I, get, you know, I pushed through it because I needed to work on that piece again the next day. And uh, so now I'm good. <laughs> yes, Dennis. I'm wondering what people feel in response to looking at your work. I know I just feel this floating feeling often, and we've talked about that quite a bit, but I'm just wondering what other people feel. Okay. I see like, uh, man, like, like that one, there's something, the colors, there's something about the colors and the, the way the, I guess, the, those are, what are those animals, I forgot what they're. Uh, the rams. They're like floating, there's like a feeling, like something like it's very spiritual about it. I see, I see the, the spiritual. I feel a spirituality from all of them. Very, you know, very coming. I can pinpoint exactly where it's coming from, but like the, the, the I don't know. I'm guessing the the blending, the mist, and the colors. Is there something spiritual? It's really, really cool. Thank you, thank you. Well, I, I think get... the huge size helps that feeling. Like I, I, I ask myself, if I see the same picture, you know, in a tiny little canvas, I will be interested, but it won't give me that feeling of, like when I'm standing right there looking at it, it's like, man, it's like I almost want to jump into it, you know? Right, right. Exactly. So yes. I see the, I see how the size of the painting. Yes, yes. Interesting, and, very interesting. And, and um, that's a really interesting point. First of all, I am a spiritual seeker. So, and I have been spiritual my whole life since I was a little girl, so it comes out in my, art and, and um, you know, going back to, it may relate to why things, you know, why you paint big. They're just things that you have inside you. You know, and everybody's different. Some people, you know, work on those miniatures and I'm the right, right. I'm like, how can you do that? I would go crazy. Um, so for, you know, so I need the big and somebody else would say, oh, you know, that's not for me, but it's really important to, to do that, uh, to find what's right for you. Um, how, how many of you here are, Artists. Good. Okay. Great. All right. Um, the other thing, uh, talking about stepping into the painting, that was a really great observation. I, on purpose, made the horizon line in these right. and the one on the other side low so that it would actually accentuate that feeling of being able to, that you as the viewer are able to step in and be part of the painting because again that's what I want I want a dialogue between people who are uh, viewing my work you know or having a dial and have a dialogue with it I see in some of your pictures you or some of the paintings right here I know in these two on these two all the bigger ones you have the periodic table kind yes. of I just wanted to ask like what that has to do with the whole painting okay. um, First of all, I'm really interested in science. Okay. Um, I like um, things that may not seem that they connect, but they do. And everything is made out of all those elements that are on the periodic table. So even the titles, and um, I have this one is called 2HE, it's for helium. Uh, that's yeah. cool. So that's I started cool. with one, one H, hydrogen is that one there. This is my second painting in this series, so this is two helium, and then it went on. So you'll see, once we get the labels up, <laughs> that uh, some of the other ones in this particular series have names that relate to the periodic table. Ooh. Good observation. Yes? Um, I'm noticing in this one your H, that uh, you have these markings in the crust, or I'm assuming you have them on the crust. What do you mean by that? I, I, I'm sorry, say it again. Oh, this here? Yeah. Okay, 
So there's a can I repeat the clouds this? In, in this series. There's a space at the top of the cloud, and for me, it's a portal. It's a portal, another way in to and like the mystery of what's happening behind. Right. So the other thing I try to accomplish with my work, speaking of going in, is, you know, obviously this is two dimension, but I love the concept of three dimension in sculpture. So my ideas, part of the ideas that I was trying to achieve in the process was how do you create uh, three dimension in two dimension uh, going forwards and backwards rather than just left to right, up and down. And so that is part of how that came about. So you can see here, um, but you can see in any of these, there's there's a um, uh, there's a, there's lots of things missing here, if in terms of our physical world. But that's important because that there's that idea of going in and out, as well as connection to one another. I think we can really see it on that big one in the back too. The figures are coming out toward us. Oh, this one back here, do you want to walk over here? Do you want to walk over here? I have a question. <laughs> oh, okay. Can we move that? I don't know why the. Danielle. Danielle. That was not part of the. Okay, thank you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I was wondering if somebody was like. <laughs> That's crashing into my painting wanting to go in it. <laughs> it's for coffee. <laughs> coffee table. <laughs> so, yeah, so this one you had asked me a question about that? Or can well, I, I was just making a comment that you were talking about things coming out toward us and going in yes. and entrance points to the deeper and deeper layers. Yes. I thought this was a great Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. This one's called Pushback. This one I did during COVID. And I, for many of us who went through COVID, there was a real emotional thing that happened. Uh, Sometimes we didn't even know it because of the isolation and things that change so drastically. I mean, one day we're, you know, going about our business as usual, and then the next day all of a sudden we're scared that this, you know, this, this virus could affect, um, uh, you know, our health and our life. And then, you know, things shut down, and it, I mean, it was so fast and quick that um, I particularly had a really uh, difficult time in response to it. And I didn't even know it was happening until later. So it came out through my work. And so there was this real angst and anxiety and feeling of uh, chaos and, and uh, uh, not being in control and wanting to fight back. And so the, hence the name pushback. And so uh, that's actually a self-portrait. So what I also like to do is I like to be able to bring things out of my paintings into three dimension. And that's what this is. So this relates to that. And uh, this was the first time I did this. I had the opportunity to do it here because of the space. And that's another thing as an artist. Um, it's not just about you know painting a, a series of work and uh, curating your work. Um, like in a, um, in, in the same everywhere. I love the possibilities that can happen in a space that I've never been in before and the relationship. I mean, these walls here are different than a, like a traditional white box gallery. So, and uh, they're carpeted and they're gray. So that started making me think um, of different ways to handle it and that's what I did, and I love using string, as you can see. Um, it's another form of line. Rather than thinking of it as just a fiber, it's also line. The same thing with the drips. 
it's another way that I use line in my work. So this has an architectural element, which mirrors the architectural element there. And then of course the natural elements here that, that uh, mirror those there. If you guys have more thoughts and responses to the work, they can share. You can always ask me privately while you're going around taking a look. If you have any other questions, please don't be shy. I'll be happy to talk with you. And, um, yeah. I like how you incorporated all this for, like, some of the string. And you said you like science. Is that some of, like, the pyramid that reflects off a little bit of light? The glass, like, diamond pyramid that reflects light off? Is that how you envision that? That's really a beautiful analogy. I did not consciously think of that. It gives me goosebumps, actually, <laughs> because one of the greatest things that I, um, I love uh, hearing is other people talk about what they see in my work, because all of you have different experiences than I do. So you bring a different set of knowledge, experience to a work and so you will see things that I didn't imagine, but that are completely relevant because it's your experience. And I love hearing that. And I learn things like this. I don't know even what you're, you're referring to, but now I'm like, oh, what is it that, again, the name of it? It's like um, a diamond pyramid and basically it reflects off light and like kind a prism, of like a prism, mm -hmm. yeah. I love that, I love that. And yeah, so so yes, I love the idea of light. I mean, as a painter, light is important. Um, and uh, so, yes, and it's in the shape of a pyramid. So now I'm gonna look that up. You never know where that's gonna come into my work in the future. So thank you for asking and sharing that information. Yes? Um, I did have one question. Like I noticed that it kind of looks like they have like boxing gloves on? Um, yes. And is that like some sort of deeper meaning in that or is that just a fun choice or what? Yeah, that was part of the struggle that I was going through during that period of time when I was uh, painting. And uh, yeah, there was something that I just felt that that was um, a representation of what I, I was feeling. I like how you choose is it the oil that you used over your eyes on the side? Yes. I love how you Yes, choose. oil. This is oil. Yes. What kind of feeling do you get from that? Like, they're not sure where we're going. Okay. That's Anxiety. Right. I didn't know if any, everybody could hear that. I'm sorry, I should have repeated the questions and then the answers. Um, the, um, the question was, um, you know, is this oil here? And then Heather asked, um, what does that make you feel that the eyes are covered? And the, it was, they don't know where they're going, which is, yeah, that's beautiful. And there was another answer that, of anxiety. What? Someone also said anxiety. Oh, anxiety. Like yes. Anxiety for that. Yeah. Anything else anybody would like to share? You mentioned like a I have to portal. Get <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the portal on the other the piece on the other yes. side. Is that the like that's the effect that I get from these two? Like oh. they're connected in that kind of way. Yes. Like that kind of darkness inside. Like it feels like I could go in one and come out the other. That's okay. like how I felt when I saw this. Oh, that's great. I was not sure if that was the same inspiration. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And so um, what does that mean to you? I'm trying to figure that out right now. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, we don't always know. Yeah, they were, when I first, like, saw them, when I first just um, mounted them, I, like, flashed on to them, and I was not entirely sure why, but I think maybe the color is very, like, it feels real even though it's abstracted. Like, I don't know. Like, I could, I can almost hear the sound. of the air and the water in my mind, that's like what it sounds like, like water and air, that's 
Berlin and like, I don't know, it's inspiring, you know? Oh, thank you. I love it. I love that. This is something I, the dripping, right? That I'm, like the dripping and those blendings, is, like that style is completely like me, man, uh, you know? To the point of what I feel on Amazon, those huge powder brush to like do yes. those blendings. But it, I don't know nothing about oil. Now with, with acrylic, uh, supposedly, I'm not, you know, not expert, like I would use water, I would water down the acrylic as to make blood or something drip. Right. But then it, when it dries, it dries. You can see through it, it's not. And then like I got this liquid on Amazon, it's like a milky liquid that you mix the acrylic and you make just to, but the, the color will stay bright. Yes. Why you, why you ever, why use the uh, oil for the dripping? And uh, if you ever use the style of mixing the acrylic to make, you know, the drips or. Yeah, the initial, the initial uh, drips are uh, acrylic. This is acrylic here. Ah, with water. Okay, yes, with See, water. See, right, it dries, yeah. But for me, the uh, using the medium, the the, um, the turp, the turpentine, to uh, something happens, something is different. It breaks down the particles of the oil differently than water breaks down acrylic, acrylic. Uh, so for me that is really uh, exciting what happens and the blending of the colors too and so part of it I you know I'm uh, I have the brush and I'm the strokes I'm making I'm in control of that but I am not in control of what happens after that. And I love that. <laughs> I love that, you know, push and pull, that tension between control and not being in control. And the more I can push that, the more I enjoy working. I don't know if you use tape. To like That's for tape, right? Yes. The, the stripes, the tape. So, yeah, so it's a constant layering. So there's lots of layers. And then I got to a point where there was a darker, it was darker. Mm -hmm. And so then I put the tape on there so that when I added the lighter uh, paint, pulling this off, you'd see the darker. But, you know, there's such surprises here. You know, I don't, I didn't know that certain things were going to happen. And, yeah, again, and that's the excitement of it. I tried that too with the tapes. Yeah. And acrylic, but uh, every time, I guess because I use watered down acrylic, I on oh, already on a canvas that's already had a lot of acrylic on it, yes. you know. And when I take the tape off, it will bleed through. Like I can never get a straight, you know, yeah. those well, sharp edges. If you look, it's not that sharp, but it also depends on the type of. Um, tape you use right. and I have to wait for the oil. There's also another thing with acrylic because it, it's a plastic based it's a petroleum I think of acrylic it has a petroleum in it. Um, so when you so when you pull it off you could also pull off layers of the acrylic depending on how thick it is. And this is not regular I don't know canvas it is. Uh, material I guess. Yeah, cheap it is. The, like I, you know the cheap canvas I get from Amazon no, it, I buy this a, from a source. I buy it in rolls. It's a more, it's a better material. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's already it. gessoed. Um, oh, wow. Sometimes oh, I, gesso. sometimes I gesso it again, but mainly <laughs> when I do these, I, I don't. Um, you uh, just add another gesso. Sometimes I use gesso as a paint. Cool, because I'm gonna play with that too. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, go ahead. Out of all of these here, which one's the last one you painted? The last one. The last one I painted is this one, right here. Right here, and these panels. This is all one. Piece. Pardon? Is that all one piece? Would you consider it or it? I do. I like the idea of installation. Mm -hmm. um, I'd really like to even go far farther with it. I have. 
uh, but um, I don't have all the, I, I did that with this particular piece, but I moved and I just didn't have the space and place to put things that would stay you know, without breaking. And I said, okay, well, next exhi exhibition, I have a chance to do something else. But yeah, I'd love to be able to take a space and you actually walk into it and that it would be um, uh, more of a, uh, experience than seeing it like more traditional with things hanging on the wall but yeah and, and even interactive but I, you know that's that'll come sometime some artists reach a certain point in their career of success and found a good style and they kind of just stick with it i love meeting artists like this that are constantly innovating and pushing the boundaries pushing the edge she's never going to stop <laughs> like no. trying something new yeah, so all... even this she was moving it around in the gallery figuring out the exact composition for the space. That was like a new iteration of that piece. And right. she tried to bring in branches that crossed here. It was gonna be even more, but we had to stop her because of like library restrictions. So sorry about that. But I just love that spirit. And I want you guys to like embrace that too. Just always, no matter how far you are and how successful, just keep pushing the boundaries and being innovative. Yeah. Thanks for Thank being that example for all of us. Yeah, well, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. You know, you do the same in your work. That's why we understand each other. So, uh, yeah. I'll follow your yeah. <laughs> well, I've been doing it a while. <laughs> so, you know, that's part of it. You have the experience and you, um, at some point, you're not worried because, um, uh, you know, when I first started, I was so uh, interested in the technical aspect. Uh, because I didn't know anything and so um, now I've gotten to a point where I've gotten to a, 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 tech, a level um, where I'm comfortable with that and still like I said I'm always pushing but now I can expand my thoughts and go further and I think that's also because of my um, uh, art, interior design background for me making things uh, three dimension is natural uh, you know, you have a concept, it starts as two dimension drawings, ideas, or, and then m m being able to live in a space or work in a space. Uh, so it's very natural for me to take ideas and be able to experience, because I've always thought of interior design as an experience also. Is there any advice you would give to young arts? Uh, just artists? keep going, don't give up, never. Never, never, never. Just and be true to yourself. Don't ever let anybody say, "Oh, what?" You know, somebody says, "Why are you doing that?" And you know, well, because that's from you, and that's important. So just keep going. And the other thing I would say is find mentors. There are people that you will connect with who will be happy to help and give you guidance. Um, and so, yeah, reach out. Reach out. For these two canvases, did you feel the Holy Spirit? Because I affiliate um, like the sky and the ocean most with God. So, I, like, did you feel? I don't know. God. I'm so. It's wonderful that you felt that. Thank you know. Thank you for bringing that up. I am very spiritual, and 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 God has been um, uh, important to me since I was a little girl. Uh, uh, my ideas have changed over time, and so uh, it has to be in there. It's just something that's inside of me. Uh, so yes, it comes out without me def uh, thinking specifically. Because right now, because at this point, because I've been doing it so long, I already feel that 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 is already part of me. So it just is natural. I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, uh, it's not separate anymore. So thinking about it, it's just part of it. That's beautiful. Yeah. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>